Seattle quake swarm, 82 earthquakes in three days, and counting. Puget Sound, Monroe area, around Seattle, Washington, is still rattling after the magnitude 4.6 and the aftershock of 3.5 magnitude. And here we are. As you can see, it's very close to the border of Canada. Scott hop, skip, and a jump from Vancouver Island, where we had the original 6.2 on July 3rd, that we've already connected geologically to uh, Ridgecrest, California, Southern California, northeast of Los Angeles. That's because the Cascadia Arc. This is okay. This is the Seattle area, Puget Sound, and uh, if we go out again, we'll see that the Cascadia Arc that has all these high threat volcanoes from what we have already given you to show you the tectonic map here. I still have it here. You see that this arc, the arc that is up here, is being pushed northward. This, pro this is progressing. The Walker Lane uh, fault belt is pushing towards the north, the Cascadia Arc. And of course, this thing, the whole thing here, you can see the arc going up, Cascadia Arc to the um, that's the one with Fuca Plate, San Francisco, the uh, San Andreas Fault. And uh, we have the uh, Rocky Mountains here, and of course on this side, Yellowstone. Now, this area here, the Walker Lane Belt, goes all the way south to the Garlic Fault. Okay, this is the area that will be giving more of the quakes, as the geologist said. Two day, it took them two days to tell us, two, two days and more, to tell us that this quake swarm was in the volcanic field of Coso. Then they said, they announced that they would keep uh, monitoring it in case of eruption. Okay, when you hear that word eruption, they had to say it. And uh, this is zip locked here. And that uh, Vancouver quake took 13 hours to hit at the 6.4 on July 4th, on Thursday. One day later, the 7.1 came about, and then we had the aftershocks of the 7.1. But this is the area that is connected. We've already connected that geologically in one of my previous videos. It is connected. That's why five years ago, when you had the same area giving an earthquake of 6.2 in 2015, again in the summer, it took 24 hours to hit again at Ridgecrest. That's not a coincidence because the Walker Lane Fault, this is it right there, that whole thing, you can see it goes all the way up this way and pushes up towards the Cascadia Arc. This is the Cascadia Arc right there. It has all these very high threat volcanoes. And this is the Long Valley Caldera which is, of course, the whole thing connected to the Clear Lake as well. And these things that we've had here here at uh, Piscanova, that was a uh, quake storm too, but I saw another map that said Salton Buttes, sorry, Salton Seas, Salton Sea would, would start, the, um, there's one scenario that the quakes would start there and push all the way down up north, San Andreas, through this whole section here, starting from here. But that's another scenario. I didn't go into that. Okay, so we've already connected Walker Lane geologically with the Cascadia Arc, this one here, this straight line north-south. So, and also we noticed that the uh, quakes five years ago, uh, Vancouver to uh, Ridgecrest, and again now, July 3rd, 6.2 Vancouver, the next day, 13 hours later, 6.4 and the day later, 7.1 at Ridgecrest. Volcanic area here. Some people say that this is tectonic, whereas this is uh, magmatic. Okay? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a geologist. And uh, even the geologists between them 
They, they sometimes disagree. What can I tell you? But let's go to some nice charts here. Pacific uh, PNSN, Northwest, Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. And I have here about, uh, I started, I think, from the 9th, about three or four days. And, um, is that right? Okay. Um, you can see that the, if this is color coded. I changed the scale. Uh, red is uh, stronger and white is uh, uh, weaker. And you can see that if you play around, okay, you can see that it's basically around that same area. This happens to be Vancouver Island, okay, and Seattle is over here. Now, if we go out, I want to show you, if we go out, that doesn't go out anymore. Okay, there we go. And change the parameters. Go to 12. Go to, go to 12. Okay. What am I doing? Wait a minute. Okay, this is on the 12th, one day, and we see here Vancouver Island and Seattle and Medford. And for some very odd reason, there's, they're always in the same three areas there, and there's absolutely nothing in this area here. Portland, Salem, absolutely nothing. I don't know, it's been doing that for ages. I don't know why. Maybe somebody's a geologist and he can comment why is that? Why is it like that? Anyway, I'll leave a link below for you so you can see this. They're pretty small, and um, they're steady like that, hitting up and down, up and down, up. Oh, what's that one? What was that one? There was a bigger one. Where was it? No, it wasn't bigger. Okay, so there you have the action, and um, this is the location, as we said before, Seattle, Mount St. Helens, and uh, we saw that, that's very active, Mount Rainier, there you go, massive stratovolcano, 54 miles southeast of Seattle, in Washington is uh, considered one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world and it is on the decade volcano list because it's a large amount of glacial ice Mount Rainier could potentially produce massive lahars that would ha threaten the whole of the Puyallu River Valley okay this one here and Mount Baker and Bonanza Peak, Glacier Peak. So uh, you have a lot of, uh, okay, this is, this is the area that is in the Cascade Arc, and this is definitely, from what we saw, connected to Ridgecrest. It is, whether we like it or not, it is. Now, there are those who are very concerned about this whole area being connected to Yellowstone. This is the range and basin area, and we'll get into that in a little bit later because I want to do some more research on that and read some the latest things uh, possible, just like we found a connection between these quakes that hit five years ago and this time with Ridgecrest at the Garlic Fault, Walker Lane Fault, are connected Walker Lane is definitely connected to here. So even though it was not San Andreas, and uh, Dr. Lucy Jones was right, this has nothing to do with San Andreas. This has something to do with the Cascade Arc 
and Walker Lane fault. And she didn't mention Walker Lane yet. Nobody's mentioned Walker Lane yet. Nobody's watched, mentioned Cascadia Arc and Walker Lane uh, walking along north, uh, proceeding north towards Cascadia Arc. Nobody said anything about Walker Lane yet. Because that's a different story if anybody mentions that. That means that this whole thing will turn out very active. And as we said before, this area here is going to be giving mega thrust quakes. We're talking about very big quakes like the San Andreas, like the uh, San Francisco of 1906, which we also found doesn't hit every 500 years from the sedimentary examinations that they made. It hits just about every 300 years. The last time it hit and gave a huge tsunami that reached Japan was in the year 1700, which means that we're overdue for another big, major, mega thrust, massive earthquake in this area. Okay? And then, well, whatever you want to call it. Now, we're waiting for the big one down south, South California, and we're waiting for the, the big one, the massive one, in this area as well. And that goes hand in hand with the tsunami, earthquake tsunami. Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell you. This definitely is connected to down here. And I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.